Hey everyone, Troll Force here, and uh, yeah, this is awkward. So this is a update video. So let's get right into it. It's hard to know where to begin with this, so I suppose I'll start where I came to be. My name's Tony, or as known on the internet as Troll Force. I'm a 25-year-old man living in Georgia, and by the time this video gets uploaded, I will have left my 25 years of living in Florida behind me to live a new life. This is my YouTube story. By the time I was born, my mother was carefully advised about having children with her condition of epilepsy. And I was born perfectly healthy, except we were both in a coma after a procedure. And after I came to, she knew that I was strong. That's probably one of the few things she got right about me. When I was in school, I was mostly by myself, isolated from the other children, but I wasn't bullied or anything like that. It was by choice. I was an extremely imaginative kid and I lived in my own little world and seemingly out of touch with reality. This went on for a good long while until the end of elementary school and I was already placed in my third school. The doctors described my behavior as ADD, ADHD, and I had a speech therapist every year since I had a lot of trouble speaking. I wasn't very social at all when I was younger and I had difficulty expressing myself in words, which was often translated into mumbling and slurring. I pretty much lived blissfully unaware of the world and being happy and content with my young exciting life thinking it would last forever because in my mind, it felt like forever. I deeply adored the stories that Saturday morning cartoons VHS tapes of Disney and DreamWorks movies, and whatever aired on Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon. I felt like I could live in those worlds and that I could relate to the characters one day. However, one of the greatest lessons that stories teach me is that there's always more to be told and discovered than what lies beyond your sight, and sometimes you need to look at the back cover to understand and grasp its full meaning. I also played a lot of video games at this time. I remember my first game I ever played was Tarzan for my PC a series of unfortunate events at the Mac at school, a variety of PS2 games at my cousin's house, or whenever I hang out with my friends. But one game that stood out to me, and will stick to me for the rest of my life, is Kingdom Hearts. I still remember when I got the game. I used to get sick around Halloween a lot because of my allergies, and my mother, who already took buckets full of medication for her seizures, thought that I had asthma because of how bad my allergies were tried and failed to getting medicated, so I stayed home from school and was bedridden until the day that I came home from lunch and my dad brought me into my room where there was a brand new PS2 hooked up to the TV with Kingdom Hearts inside of it. I played the game a lot with my cousin. I loved everything about the game, even if I wasn't very good at it. Ever since then, Kingdom Hearts has been a staple in my passion for storytelling and my creative endeavors. By the time I entered middle school, my future was just starting to be called into question with my admission to the Silver Air Patrol program, which was at the start of what I should have realized that things were going to change in the near future. <laughs> I was already in my second middle school after my parents pulled me out of my first after I was bullied before my year there was even finished. My dad won me in Silver Air Patrol for a potential start of a predetermined future after high school. However, it was a future I didn't want. I do respect the military and the people who serve, but it wasn't my future and I knew that since the beginning. I just joined instead of saying no and without really speaking my mind. There were things I liked about it, but it was over as soon as I got in. O only did a few drills and then went to camp and that was pretty much my whole experience in Silver Air Patrol. But that was only the start. Toward the end of my time in middle school, my dad's anger really started to reveal itself and I was still afraid of him as I was before. Once I entered high school, I pretty much slept through most of my freshman year. At the start, I was once again approached with the military starting line. I was looking through classes for the curriculum, and ROTC was the one that Dad wanted me to do again, and I did it for him, again. The first year I joined, I met my best friend Nick. I stood up for him after a lieutenant of ours was bullying him, and once I saw it, I went up to his face and told him to go fuck himself. <laughs> a little bit of discipline was worth the friendship we had. Even though I stayed off the commander's radar for most of my four years in ROTC, I wanted to get out because I never really cared about the subject and I felt like I was wasting my time the more I stayed. So to mediate that, I got into my creative side again and discovered shortly after that I wanted to be a content creator on YouTube. I started watching PewDiePie and Markiplier right when they were at their peak. The one creator that stood out to me was KD0706. 
the creator of Elliot Goes to School and Team Fabulous. I knew after watching him for years, that's what I wanted to do. After my schoolwork, I would queue up YouTube and just binge his videos and learn what programs were used. And I spent nights imagining how I could do stuff like that for a living. However, every time I brought my interest to my dad and the term video games was used in a sentence, he would shut it down every single time and got angry thinking I was lazy and being addicted when I should have been doing was going out to nightclubs, hooking up with random women and getting blackout drunk. I did everything I could to please the man, but this was the kind of thing that wasn't for me. I just wanted to be myself at the time. I couldn't rely on anyone else but myself. I wanted to be known and just be free. And be okay and accepted for just being me and not being corrected or shackled down to someone else's beliefs. Sometime later, I picked up the book Into the Wild by John Krakauer, which told the story of Christopher Johnson McCandless, the man who walked off the grid into the wilderness and beyond. The story and Chris in particular resonated with me. This was around 2011 when I just started thinking about how I wanted my future to be. During my childhood, I took trips to Michigan with my family for reunions and other trips. And I also went this year and a few weeks before we went on the road. I discovered a game that would start my YouTube journey, Amnesia The Dark Descent. The first time I saw this game, my cousin showed me the teaser trailer for it, and at the time, it was the most amazing thing I've ever seen. And I knew that at some point I needed to get it. A little while later, I watched a playthrough of it on YouTube, and back then, I could never feel the same way about the game as I do now. It was far more scary and intense when I was a kid. In 2012, during my trip to Michigan with my family, I finally got the game. I was swimming around the lake one day, and I found $20 half submerged in the sand, and I was ecstatic because I could buy the game. I went back to look for more money, but that was all I could find that day. Later, when I went home, I bought and installed the game that would forever change my life. I must have spent the whole day playing the game during my vacation. I looked at what custom stories PewDiePie and Crazy Shootin' would play. I watched Crazy the most because his content was well suited to my personality and humor. I have so many memories of the mornings I spent watching his videos and feeling like I can make content like that one day. This would be around the time I went into my first year of high school. I slept through my morning classes, but other than that, it was a pretty chill year. I spent a lot of time reading, watching YouTube, playing Halo with my friends during auto shop, and even playing Penumbra Devils in class. Don't ask me how I did that. I always stayed on top of my work even when I wasn't shooting for honor roll. Freshman year was probably the last quiet year I had, even though my future was still coming into question. There's one more important game that came into my life that I discovered this year, however, and that would be Journey. This game came in my life at the right time as I was beginning to think about how I would be free one day. During my time in high school, I really felt like I was being held back from being my true self in front of my family. I couldn't freely express my creativity and passion without being shot down, so gaming, YouTube, and other distractions were my escape from the drama I was facing every week at the time. As soon as I got my hands on the PS3, I would wake up early Saturday mornings, make a cup of coffee, and play Journey until the sun came up. I will never forget those days. Sophomore year rolls around and it's more of the same except this summer I stay with my dad instead of going to Michigan with my family. It wasn't all that bad at first. I had to take extra classes in school in the summer to make up for algebra, and it was probably the most fun I had doing work. It wasn't as boring as I thought it would be, and around this time I was writing my first journal. I did a lot of writing, recording, and detailing my wild stories and ideas into my books, only in ways that I could understand them. Kind of like how the Cimmerillion came to be. Nothing too much of a note happened before or after my 10th year, but when the 11th rolled around, Things got serious. My future was really being called into question as to what I would be doing after graduation, and my answer hasn't changed, but I still made the same excuse. I always said that I didn't know what I was going to do. A dead end job, the military, college. I knew deep in my heart what I really wanted to do, but it was going to take a lot of work to make it happen. Back in 2011, I created a YouTube channel to upload Roblox videos at the time. I was really big into online multiplayer games. Mainly Club Penguin and Roblox, and Wizard 101, both of which I have fond memories of. There were a couple of Roblox videos on my channel, but neither were recovered. I deleted them both for reasons I can't remember. The earliest videos I had that are still up on my channel are Amnesia Dark Descent Clips, a couple of FNAF videos, Portal, and Half-Life 2. I still remember making the thumbnails for these right before school. 
My upload schedule wasn't at all there yet. I was still in school finishing up work and trying to figure out what to do with my life besides YouTube. Even though it was, and still is, a dream, I wasn't sure how far it alone could get me. Finally, we reached senior year, my favorite year. When I was with my dads, we had a routine every morning I was there. We would wake up early, I'd make some fruit smoothies, then we'd drive up to South Tampa. I'd gone through a fair few homes growing up, so I spent some of my childhood divided between West and South Tampa. Needless to say, there was a lot of going back and forth between two different houses and two different lives. In 2015, during the summer, the last summer I spent with my dad, he was running an online persona different from mine. I'm not going to disclose fully what it is, but it's part of a chapter in my life I left behind when I moved from Florida. It perfectly reflected his personality and his ideas, and I was stuck building it with him for almost four years throughout my whole school period. The journals I wrote were a part of my desire to escape that and become my own man. Once the semester rolled around again, I took every chance I had to live those days to the fullest since it would be the last time I would see my friends at school and the peace I had there. I would stand on the walkway and stare at the sunrise right before classes would start. I spent most of my time outside just gazing at the nature around me, thinking about a future where someone like me would belong. I pictured myself as a traveler in journey and how I would climb higher and higher, away from my troubles and be part of something bigger. It was the only thing that kept me going at the time. My 18th birthday came up and dad celebrated with me in his own special way. I had a couple of shots of whiskey as my first drink, then we went out to bars and nightclubs, and then lastly, strip clubs. Underage drinking, a night of debauchery, and braving the night as a new adult. It was a fun night, but one I seldom tell people about. Spent almost $300 of my dad's money on lap dances. I don't regret my birthday, I just kinda wish I didn't do it with him. I bragged about it to my friends at school the next day with a vague hint of alcohol on my breath. Just not enough for anyone to notice. However, that is not the most fun I had that night that year. Not even close. That much we go to a grad bash 2016. It was nearly to the end of my senior year. A bunch of us went to Universal Studios Orlando, my favorite theme park, to spend a real good night there as graduates. It was a real treat and a night I would never forget. When I was a kid, as far back as I can remember, that would take me to every theme park in the state of Florida. Save for Six Flags. We go to Universal, Busch Gardens, SeaWorld, and Disney World just a couple times. I was spoiled with Universal because that's the theme park we went to the most. I knew every ride there, every fun spot to go to, that place felt like home to me, and my creative endeavors probably came from there. I had the whole place to myself for 5 hours straight that night. I spent a lot of time at Hogsmeade, drinking butterbeer, visiting gift shops, but most of all, there were no lines on the rides, so I went to as many as are open that night. I never had that much freedom there, and it was a hopeful reminder to me that freedom was right around the corner. I just had to wait a little longer. My last few weeks until graduation put me at a crossroads. I had to make a decision. If I was going to Michigan again for the first time in three years, or to go to the military like my dad wanted. The answer wasn't clear to me at the time, but I felt it in my heart. I spent months and months studying for the ASVAB, taking trips to Temple Terrace and back, only to throw it all away at the last second. You see, I had a promising future laid out for me in school. Two, actually, but I didn't want them. I wanted my own future, to carve my own path, as any man should. I told Dad that I wasn't going to the Air Force like he did, even after all those years I spent in school preparing for it. He didn't approve, of course, and thought it was a stupid idea for me to throw it all away like that and go on vacation instead, but I really needed this. After the next couple of weeks, I traveled up the country with my family. Every time I crossed the Florida state line, I felt an overwhelming sense of relief. I would be several hundred miles away from my problems and the things holding me back in that cage. We spent a couple weeks in Memphis, Tennessee. I saw my first Redbirds game and it's another night I'll never forget. I even had the baseball and had to prove it. I stood out on the bleachers looking out the field and cityscape. There was a ceremony for Prince. This was around the time of his passing. The one thing I remember from that night is that once you get a taste of freedom, the world looks so much brighter around you wherever you are. 
We went out to Michigan later, and for much of my time there, the area around Clear Lake, Michigan really felt like a sanctuary to me. I was on the opposite end of the world, the farthest reaches of the country I could be at. North is the path to freedom and happiness, pointing towards the sky in the future. There's much more to talk about, but in time, I will possibly in future uploads. Towards the end of my trip, we went to Arizona, and despite never being that far out west, it was one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen. We spent a month up there, and I would spend almost every day riding a bike through the trail near the mountains. I really felt the possibilities of what my dreams would lead me to. I spent most of my life abiding by other people's wishes, and it kept making me fall back into the same dark place I knew all too well as my old home. There was a big world out there, and every day I saw people living it. I wanted that in my life. I wanted my life. I uploaded the Edge of Revolution GMV and Amnesia Dark Descent speedrun video, reviving my channel and trying to make my identity with it. My best friend from school ran a YouTube and Twitch channel and wanted me to keep uploading and doing what I loved, and I did just that. He would message me every now and then and then checking out my new uploads, and I watch his streams and see how he's doing with life. I still miss him. At the last week, I took a long last look at the West Valley Sun. I went back home to Florida and decided to go full steam ahead with my YouTube channel, as well as looking for work to have something to do when I wasn't uploading. I uploaded a vlog video saying that I was back home after spending three months on vacation. Then soon after, I uploaded a full walkthrough of Amnesia Dark Descent as well as the Just Seen DLC. I would make and upload these videos at the same time I would go around town looking for a job. I also made a character status video for Skyrim when Special Edition was coming out. I planned to make videos on it, but my laptop couldn't run the game well. Another series I went up was Amnesia and Machine for Pigs, then Half-Life 2 update. I uploaded the first Amnesia custom story with Key to Freedom, then Half-Life 2 episode 1. Then, one more custom story with Through the Portal. During the summer of 2016, before I came back home, I found a content creator who made a plethora of Amnesia and Penumbra videos. His channel name at the time was Frictional Daily and he made videos centered around Frictional Games content. I came in contact with him and showed him that I was a fan and I was making Amnesia content as well. I made a special video near my birthday in 2016 pretending to be drunk while playing a classic Amnesia custom story. I had the ground littered with empty coke bottles to sell the joke. After that, I uploaded a full commentary playthrough of Half-Life 2 Episode 2 to give the channel more character and express myself a bit more. A little while later, I made another update video to announce The Walking Dead coming to the channel. The channel art update video is when I uploaded my first YouTube banner once I figured it out. I made my second GMV video to cap off 2016 and begin the new year 2017. 2017 would be the biggest and most successful year of the channel's history. After that, I finished the Half-Life series for the time being and went back to creating Amnesia content. I played Matt's new game, Metis, on the channel, and made a new profile picture with one of the thumbnails. Then, as I was starting to run out of ideas, I started uploading more Left 4 Dead videos for the time being, as well as the next Amnesia custom story, Black Eagle Castle. At some point in the Left 4 Dead playthrough series, I came up with an idea for my own take of the Amnesia lore series, and it came to be known as Amnesia Explained. My most successful series on the channel to date, I would make detailed observations of each and every level of Amnesia Dark Descent and upload my lore to the channel each time. Soon after, I started uploading Telltale's The Walking Dead on the channel, but stopped after the first episode since I wasn't having much fun with it. I went back with Amnesia Custom Story content while wrapping up Left 4 Dead. Around this time, I wanted to collab with another creator, so I found a guy named Cade, whose channel name is The Bravest. And he uploaded GMod content, and then after I reached out to him, we made a small group of friends and started playing Stop It Slender. It was a really fun night, and the first time I hung out and played a game online like that. I continue uploading videos like usual and making time for Kate and his content, making more explained videos for the time, as well as GMod content. A week or so later, I made my first trolling segment in the storage episode of Amnesia Explained. I greatly enjoyed Amnesia Monster Trolling content and wanted to make some of my own, so I integrated it into my series. Once I got to the middle portion of my Amnesia Explained series, I knew that I had to make another series once this one concludes, so I announced that Penumbra Overture would be the next game to make a series on. The series would air on Penumbra's 10th anniversary. <laughs> After another Explained episode, I uploaded another Gmod co-op video, 
where I proudly displayed my first prop on twin. Oh my god! Oh my god! What? Shane, where did you die at? Shane. I can't actually believe that if that actually happened. I will continue making explain videos. The Northern Southern Prison episode would be the longest video in the series that took a whole weekend to make. Sometime after the morgue episode, my mother would have a bad fall after having a seizure in the kitchen. She was taken to the hospital on Davis Island near Bayshore and was stuck there for about two weeks. She was close to where I live, so I would ride over there and visit her on some days when she wasn't in operation. I would continue making videos during this time until she got out, even using the hospital's Wi-Fi to upload. My mother had been having seizures and unexpected visits to the hospital, so I was used to it. I reached another milestone with 200 videos uploaded, and I celebrated by making my own spin on unnecessary censorship and made an amnesia version of it. During the making of the Chancel and Cells episode, the editing program I used, Filmora, was having problems and some clips used in post were blacked out for some reason and I didn't notice until after a video finished rendering. I didn't feel like re-rendering it again so I grabbed the missing clips and included them in a separate video. After that, I made a spoof on a 24 hour overnight challenge video that dominated much of YouTube back in 2017 and that I admittedly liked back in the time. I got down to the final two Amnesia Explained videos and I decided at the last minute to make some credits at the end of each season. In instead of crediting myself for all the work, I make credits for each and every one of my special supporters at the end credits. This would be a tradition for my series moving forward. Amnesia Justine Explained was also another wildly successful video on my channel that I made just before the Penumbra Overture Explained season. The viewer traction on my channel at this point was reaching a peak and I wanted to keep it going for as long as I could. When I was looking for work, I would help collab with Matt to be featured in other lore videos of his before he took them down, and I'd do the same for Kate and my other friends. On March 30th, 2017, the Penumbra Overture Explained season had begun, and I increased the quality of production and became really passionate about covering Penumbra series on my channel. When April Fools rolled around, the We Are Number One meme was going around, and I made my own spin on it on that date. I continued playing Amnesia Custom Stories to diversify the content, in between uploading more and Penumbra Explained videos. And around the time the Hold Em Off episode went live, I met someone on Matt's livestream. In March 2017, I met someone who I would call Raven on Matt's Penumbra Necrolog livestream. I made up a meme on the spot with a Becky Let Me Smash bit and turned it into Slugfuck. Matt was killing slugs on the wall in the game and I made him say, You want Slugfuck? And I was almost in tears laughing. Around the same time, Raven came up in the stream chat. I didn't really notice her at first, until a little bit of drama was being stirred up because of her joining in the fun, but the situation being misunderstood. I put a stop to it, and soon after that, we became friends. She found my Steam profile and added me. We would talk a lot, and a little while later, she became my best friend at the time. After a while, me and Nick were busy with our own lives. He was in the military and didn't have a lot of free time to talk, so I would talk to Raven instead. She saw the Hold Em Off custom story video and thought it was the funniest thing on my channel. In time, we learned more about each other, shared the same hobbies and interests, and we were always there for each other. We were inseparable as friends at the time. After another Penumbra Explained video went up, I laid out a blueprint for the Explained series moving forward. I knew that I would eventually run out of horror games to cover, so I wanted to expand in new heights and familiar regions. I also made the video as a reminder to myself to reach for newer heights and to always watch that video whenever I felt like I was losing motivation. To this day, it still has that effect on I made the video in just a few hours, but it feels timeless to me. After another Penumbra episode went up, I played another Amnesia custom story, Destiny Rebellion by Umbakarna. One of my favorite playthroughs. I continued to upload and diversify content until I reached the final episode of Penumbra Overture Explained. Once again, I made credits to my special viewers, and I revealed my dad's content for the first and only time as an obligation. I finally told him about my YouTube channel after a year and a half of after graduation. He wanted to create content too, so I felt compelled to tell him. I wrapped up that Destiny Rebellion playthrough a while later, and my 2017 Michigan vacation was approaching. I made a Soma FPS test video and through it I announced that there would be a top 10 video in the near future. 
which is my second most viewed video on the channel where I ranked my top 10 best Anisha custom stories and mods. I know I said plenty of times in the future, but I do plan to make another one. I began uploading footage of a solo my mod I was playing, but didn't finish until a few months later. But I made one final video before going away on vacation, and that would be the Penumbra Black Plague Explain trailer, as well as including a message to thank my 100 subscribers. At this point during my vacation, my motivation and drive for the channel was slowly starting to dim. A couple months later, I made the Skyrim skit and later revealed the outro card clip for use in future Penumbra Explain videos. After I came back home again, I did a face reveal for the first time in the channel as part of the 100 subscriber special. A short time later, I talked with a few of my friends about making an Amnesia custom story, and after a lot of time writing and planning and learning the engine, I finally unveiled my first game project known as Cetus. However, during my inexperience, I felt like I had to rush the demo out for Amnesia's 7th anniversary because Hurricane Irma was coming to my town the same week I was working on it. So in case anything happened to me or my laptop, I uploaded what I was working on. The hurricane came and went, we made it through, but just barely. It was barely hanging on by a thread, but it was functional because of the storm damage. A friend of the family thought it would be a good idea to trim branches near the power line, and a branch fell and snapped said thread, and caused a mild blowout of our electricity in the house. So we were without power. We stayed at a family member's house for two weeks while Tico was installing new lines in the neighborhood. Once I made it back home, I made some videos of me playing the mod entries of Amnesia's 7th anniversary. A little while later, I began a let's play series on Outlast, running at a glorious 4 frames per second. The Black Eagle Castle version 2 was released around the same time, so I diversified the content more and played through it again to see the new changes. After I beat Outlast, I capped off the finale with a montage of me screaming, laughing, and raging consecutively throughout the game. In the next video, I finished the Soma Perdicio mod, and after that, I released the first Penumbra Black Plague Explain video that has been delayed for months since vacation in the hurricane. I slowly got back into my usual content creation with a video. I cashed in on another meme at the time, and the result was the Jurassic Ah video. <laughs> at the same time, my good friend Mike sent me a fan video of me saying fuck with a counter during my Outlast playthrough. <laughs> That video was now demonetized 5 years later, but it was worth it. I finished the Black Eagle Castle version 2 video, and soon after I uploaded another episode of Penumbra Explained. I was starting to get YouTube burnout this time, so I decided to shoot for another video series idea with Assassin's Creed lore. But sadly, this idea fell through at the same time. At the time of writing it, I just remembered at the same time I made the Top 10 video months prior, I made a second channel exclusively for a Top 10 list, but I never re-uploaded the video to that channel, and it's still dormant to this day. A few months later in 2018, I was uploading less frequently because I had an internship at Feeding America a month prior, and my motivation for the channel was still waning because I wanted to work and save money. Hunt Down the Freeman released on Steam that same year, and I cashed in on another meme with that video. I also haven't been doing well making videos because my recording software at the time, Fraps, was having major issues either not recording footage at all, or having massive lag spikes while recording. So I tried every workaround for days, and weeks, and then months. But I kept trying until I finally uploaded another Penumbra Explain video. After this video, I stopped uploading completely for a year. Throughout 2017 and 2018, I was struggling to find work due to my inexperience in the work field of nearly every place I applied to. After I graduated, I enrolled in vocational school to help me find work. Through their help, I got a small job at Feeding America, and another warehouse job that only lasted a week because my boss was an inconsiderate asshole who put me on the wrong job. I tried to explain to him three times that I was put in a job position that I didn't apply for and interview for, and that I wasn't equipped to do because he wouldn't listen to me, and then I was fired. I didn't find work for the rest of 2018 and I fell into depression. I felt worthless and useless because at the time I was stuck living at home. No job, no driver's license, no car, no friends, no girlfriend. I didn't have a whole lot to my name, not even a thousand dollars or even five hundred. I was liking so much and it was really getting to me. When I wasn't going out looking for work, playing games, or going to my favorite park to be alone, I would get a bus ride to visit my dad. He moved out of my childhood home a few months ago in 2018 and he'd be living further north but still in Tampa. I'd visit him every other Sunday. 
I was used to custody visits with my parents at the time, so I used to visit him on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and then Sundays. Just the three days out of the week while mom had four. After I graduated, we made a change. I visit him every other Sunday, but I call him at 5 p.m. every day. Every time I went to see him, it was my own choice. However, each and every visit started to become more tense, and I felt like a failure in his eyes when I was with him. This went on through the rest of 2018 and 2019. In 2019, I went back to church on my umpteenth attempt at reconnecting and trying to find purpose in my life since I felt like I had nothing. I was never a religious man, and even after growing up in a church family, I didn't go back to church to attend services. I went there to make friends. I didn't like being home with mom a whole lot, so I went out more and away from YouTube as an attempt to make another life for myself. That brought me to my church friend Nate. When I met him and he found out that I couldn't drive, he offered his help to me and every other week he helped me to learn to drive. I never got my driver's ed classes in school despite all my attempts to sign in for the curriculum. And all my family was too busy and didn't have enough time or a car to teach me. In February 2019, I got fired from the worst warehouse job in my life, and a couple months after that, I had a job at PetSmart, near where I lived. This was still during a low point in my life, but after I got the job, I started working there for a couple weeks and made an update video to the channel a year later after not being active on there. A couple months later, I made another attempt at making another Explained episode, but I quit because of OBS issues and my depressive state made me quit trying. Early in the year, I had my first panic attack after I nearly sliced off my fingertip with a knife I bought at a gun show. The warehouse I worked at was in a bad part of town. It was near Ebor and it isn't the most safest of places to be walking outside, so my dad took me to a gun show in town to get myself protection. We settled on a knife and after I had an accident with it, I went back inside the building to wash off the blood. I didn't think it was that big of a deal, I'd stop the bleeding and be careful with my finger, but my body treated it like I was in serious trouble. While washing the blood off, I started to get really dizzy, got tunnel vision, and my hearing was deafening. A man was in the bathroom with me trying to talk to me and ask me what was going on, but I couldn't understand him at all. He was speaking English, but my head felt like it was underwater and everything was muffled and blurry. I felt like I was going to pass out, so I knelt near the sink, ready to fall, but I snapped out of it. After I got back up, I was terrified because I didn't know what the fuck just happened to me right there. I went back outside, dad patched me up, and I tried to tell him what happened in the bathroom since he didn't go back in the building with me, but he brushed it off and told me to stop being a bitch. I wasn't ashamed of having panic attacks because I couldn't control what my body feels the same way of what my mind tells me. I had a feeling that I would be a danger to myself and others when I get attacks like these, but he wouldn't listen to me. My anxiety was still getting to me, but I held it off until one trip where we were going to watch a movie after driving. He told me that I had the right of way while driving and I believed him, but my anxiety got the better of me and I felt another attack coming. I stopped the car at the corner and told him to get out and get in the driver's seat. He kept asking me what's up and telling me to keep trying, but I told him that I was going to kill us both if I drove like this, and he listened and he took the wheel. I did manage to get my license in time and I felt better about myself a little. During late September 2019, my dad and I went to Universal for Halloween Horror Nights. It was my favorite thing to do on Halloween and we haven't gone in a good while, so I saved up a bit of money for our passes and we, we enjoyed the night there. That would be the last time I went to Universal. Meanwhile at work, things weren't always perfect and it wasn't improving. We were always shorthanded and the tasks that needed to be completed for the morning were too much for a team so small. I was actively trying to work hard to get stuff done, but my supplies would always get taken by another coworker, and no help was available. After four months of working there, I was fired again, but my dad came through it to me and got me three new jobs with this guy the following weekend. A month later, I saved up for a PS4 and uploaded footage to the channel and another attempt to get back into my creative world. This is at the time the pandemic hit, so things would take a major turn from here on out. After a little over two years of saving up money, I bought my first gaming PC, which is what I use now for everything. I always wanted a nice rig to continue creating content and making the things I create bigger and better. I made another update video coming back in 2020. I revealed both my current PC and the laptop that started the channel. At the end of the video, I announced two new projects in the works that were USA, a mod for Amnesia, and Alpha, a mod for Soma. A couple months later, my good friend Seth, or Midnight Researcher, invited me to go on the Horrorcon Discord server ran by Mr. Creepypasta. 
I've watched a couple of creepypastas a long time ago in school, so I knew who he was. At the same time, I was really getting into the Silent Hill series. I watched the first game on YouTube back in 2017, but I forgot to check out the sequel. I finally managed to check out the sequel this year, and I fell in love with the series. About a month later, when I wasn't working or helping Seth with projects, I was making my own project more. In late 2019, I decided to work on USA more. Crafting more of the story, building my characters, setting. I spent quite a bit of time work I spent quite a bit of time working around this time. I'd go out of town to wire lights to homes and bring homes good money. Whenever I wasn't burnt out from work or YouTube, I work on my game. During development I decided that the Cafe 5 to 2 would be a great inspiration for the ending of my game. But once I started building it, I had another idea. Much time passed and I converted USA into a Silent Hill fan game named Silent Hill Respite. And I made a release trailer to announce the game. I already talked in length about this game in several separate videos, so you can go check them out. September 8th rolled around, and it was Amnesia Dark Descent's 10th anniversary, so to celebrate, I made a low-effort, out-of-season April Fool's joke. I edited the video and mic to make it sound amateurish as part of the joke. Also around this time, Amnesia Rebirth was releasing in a month, so after I pre-ordered the game, I made a Let's Play series of all of Frictional Games games called Road to Rebirth. Silent Hill Respite version 1.1 was released on September 5th, 2020. Sometime after I released the game, I also uploaded the first developer commentary video talking about the game. The following weekend after the video went live, Silent Hill made headlines. I saw article after article being published about my mod, and it garnered a lot more attention than I was anticipating. I also talked in length about this in my second developer commentary video, but basically the gist of it is, while I was working on the game, I was in a number of smaller Amnesia Discord servers ran and managed by big named Frictional Games modders. I won't give off names, but I left that community a long time ago. I liked it at first, but the more I stayed, there was just always some vile, disgusting conspiracy against creators at almost every week and just general toxicity. The servers would also crash and burn thanks to raids, public conflicts with creators, and death threats, just to name a few. I stayed out of the drama and actually tried to keep the peace. Months later, I raised up the ranks and became a server manager after another big names content creator publicly lost his shit and left the server. I made it to the top of this sinking ship and after I thought the water would settle, a friend of mine who co-owned the channel made an incredibly stupid decision of unbanning people who raided the last server to show forgiveness and it went as well as he would have imagined. After we exchanged words and he went through with the decision, I left the group and stayed away. I completed the whole playthrough of Road to Rebirth all the way until Amnesia Rebirth's release. Once the game was released, I got overzealous and played the entire game from beginning to end in a single day, and didn't want to record any footage. I did end up recording the game at a later date, but I wanted to experience the game by myself without making anything for the camera. I made a short announcement on my channel about my panel at Horicon VR in the upcoming days, and another update for Silent Hill Respite. Work and depression were still keeping me busy throughout 2020, and I didn't upload more until February 1st, 2021, with a new Silent Hill Respite video. I uploaded the full-length credits of the movie that would release in the following month. I made the credits faithfully to the spirits of the games at the time, listing each and every member involved with the creation of the series, and the final credits were of other members involved in the Silent Hill Respite game. The list had been updated via actual game credits and the movie credits. This video also took an entire weekend with little sleep to make. I cashed in on yet another meme with the Lamar Rose Franklin meme, taking place in Soma. After I compiled a lot more footage and made more changes, I released the Silent Hill Respite Waiting For You update on March 4th, 2021, and the movie released on the channel a day later. I made the movie in a cinematic fashion to mirror the quality of the games at the time, and after a while, I finally made and released another severely delayed Penerpa Explained video with the help of Seth for editing. Changes may be made in the future. Two months later, on May 2nd, I released my highest quality of GMV to date, which is the Amnesia Voices video. I had a crazy idea in my head to integrate the song from the medium into Amnesia with a song that fits surprisingly well. This is one of the videos that I made I'm very proud of. At long last, on May 17th, I decided to resume and finish the Road to Rebirth series with my playthrough of Amnesia Rebirth. I finished the game on July 11th, 2021, and at the end of the week, I flew out to Texas to meet Seth in person for the first time. It was the first time I met someone on the internet, but certainly not the last. 
We met up in Houston for Comic Palooza and had a great time there. A few months later, after I came back home, I made the second and final developer commentary video for Silent Hill Respite at the mark of its one year anniversary. After this video aired, I ceased all active developments on Silent Hill Respite and stopped covering the game on my channel. Another sequel was being worked on, but only in script. I made another Skyrim video a week or so later, but my uploads were becoming less frequent than before. I was working at Publix during this time, so I was more busy than I was at Vance some time prior. I didn't upload again for a year like I did before, but near the end of last year, I made my Soma tributes with Running Up That Hill by Kate Bush. Earlier this year, I made VR videos for the first time on Gmod, with me acting like my usual self to keep the content going after I got off work. But I really didn't upload anything more until now because this year I moved out of Florida and my focus and motivation was centered solely on that. There's actually a big reason for this and I will explain. Let's go back to 2020. In 2020 when the pandemic hit, I was working three jobs at the same time. I was an electrician's apprentice, AV assistant, and an outdoor light fixture installer. And I was still broke. I was out of the house a lot and out of town going to work and living paycheck to paycheck. My self-esteem was still on a down low and I spent a lot more time online. Much of the time is a blur except the bad parts which I'm getting into now. Since I was still broke and I couldn't move out or go anywhere without a car, my mom met a man online and started trying to introduce me to him whenever I got back home from work or whatever else. At first impression, I didn't like him at all and wanted nothing to do with him. He gave me bad vibes from the get-go, and I already had enough of my play with my dad. Four years out of being graduated and on my own, I was falling deeper into depression as time went on, and my anxiety got worse the more time I spent isolated. The last night I spent with my friend Nate was a while after I got my driver's license. We walked on Bayshore up from the park talking. He wanted to hang out and see how I was doing, and although he was supportive of me throughout my training, he didn't always have my back. I told him that I was battling depression in a serious way, but he brushed me off and questioned my religious view on it, and I changed the topic because he didn't understand. When we were at the park late at night, we walked on the dock, and while we were there, we were approached by a drunk man wielding a knife. He was trying to get our attention, calling us fags for ignoring him, and when I turned to face him, he pulled out a fishing knife, and I jumped back and quickly went away from him, while my friend was completely oblivious to the situation. Nate didn't really sense that we were in danger and that the situation could have gone really wrong, but a little while after that encounter, he took me home. I never saw him again after that night. I kept trying to contact him, but he would never return my calls or text. So, I was alone again. Over the summer, I went over to my dad's for the weekend and took my PC with me. He was under the impression that I was going to stay for the week, but I told him the weekend. I was allowed to work on my game while I was there, but that would backfire. After I came back to his house after work one day, I ate dinner with him and went back to my computer to do research and work on my game some more. I lost track of time and it went over an hour. I didn't think much of it since dad was in the living room watching a movie, but once I got back out there, he had a sit down conversation with me on the couch and told me that I had an addiction and I had nothing to show for what I was doing with my life and that he didn't like that I didn't want to see him for that long. He took me and my PC back home the next morning. I love my dad because I grew up with him for 23 years of my life, but he has always been such a big self-absorbed asshole ever since I was a kid. Hell, even after I graduated and gave up on the military, he said that he didn't want to be my father anymore and kicked me out of the house. There's a huge reason why I spent so much time online, but I didn't do it like a drug addiction like he implies. I have a life, but he never listened and never really understood me. In early 2021, I had more unwanted and unpleasant meetings with Joe, my mom's boyfriend, and each and every time I shoved him off, he only doubled down on the creepiness. I was a 23 year old man and I don't give a fuck about him and I didn't want to be his goddamn friend or son. However, he took things too far one night. When I was in the living room getting food, he showed me a photo of a nude woman on the phone and played it off like he was trying to be my friend. But my mother was in the room and that situation unleashed some very unwanted and buried memories inside of me. This is the part of my life when things began to spiral. I went back into my room and when mom asked me what was wrong, I told her what happened and she said that she would break up with him and pack up, only she didn't. After she hung out with him more, even going so far as making me out to be an asshole for not wanting to hang out with a stranger and with my family comparing me to my dad, 
I sank deeper in depression. I picked up hard liquor for the first time in two years, started going out to clubs again with my dad, and I was becoming suicidal. Joe reminded me of the first guy mom really met after my dad divorced her. My parents were happy with each other for quite some time before and after I was born, but her epilepsy was too stressful for my dad to continue. She'd have a seizure, hit her head, go to the ER, and all that monthly out of the year. Her seizures became worse after I was born and by the time I was 7 years old, they divorced and I grew up in a divided household. I was so used to her seizures. As far back as I can remember, I watched my mom fall unconscious, bleed out, sometimes get back up like it was nothing, other times needed to go to the hospital. I grew up with that to a degree so I was used to it and I wouldn't be surprised if she died like that one day. Over a decade later in 2018, she underwent a major operation that cured her epilepsy immensely to a degree. She would have to continue to take medication, but she would not fall over limp and have seizures like that anymore. So she had more freedom to do what she wanted, and she chose to make the same mistakes all over again. Not long after dad gave her the house and covered bills for her to help us live, she met a man on MySpace. They've been dating for a while, and after I met him, I didn't think much of it at the time, but this man would negatively affect the rest of my life up to that point. After we moved out of my childhood home, into a house that they couldn't afford in South Tampa. I was abused by him for years and no one knew about it. From beginning to end, I was too afraid to speak out to my father or my family about what he did to me, so I kept my mouth shut and was content on taking the secret to my grave. That was until mom met Joe 10 years later. In 2011, we moved out to my aunt's to get away from that man. He came home drunk the previous night and exploded into a rage-induced drunken episode and I thought it would be my last night of life. This guy was known to me and my family to cheat on my mom, hit her and pin her on the ground, do cocaine on the side and go out of his way to ask my cousin for some blow, among other things that would set off multiple red flags. But my mom stayed with him anyway and only broke up with him because I was there and she wasn't alone with this drunk ass. Now several years later, mom dated a guy who reminded me strongly of the other guy. I drank heavily and went out of the house more often, and I isolated myself more to distract myself from everything that was happening, and waiting for the worst. These events happened before, during, and after my VR chat meetups, and other videos I worked on at the time. In April of that year, I helped Raven come out of a bipolar episode one night, and I I convinced her to stay and let her know of all the good times we had together as friends. We played Gmod together some days and spent hours talking about Skyrim and other things as well. I realized at the time that we had been friends for a good long while and we were consistent with each other and after thinking about it some more, I was in love with her. I confessed my feelings to her and she felt the same way for me and while we were dating. At the time, I felt like I was the luckiest guy in the world. She even called me that night and told me that she would never leave me. Getting in a relationship with my best friend since 2017 and knew more than anyone else at the time. But looking back at it now, I only wish that we stayed friends. We were happy with each other for about a week. I saw a whole new side of her since we started dating. Early that year, I found out that she had DID and she only started dissociating a year prior and other aspects of her mental issues were showing up. Needless to say, she had several dissociative episodes throughout our relationship and each time was worse than the last. She was also chronically depressed her whole life, but she kept a happy face for me until we became more personal. So while I was trying to do my best to be supportive and happy for her and trying to help her feel better and happy with me, she was inclined on never being happy and there was Nothing anyone could do. This cut me deep. I really did love her and I was serious about our relationship. Even though it was a long distance relationship, we, we texted every day, but calls and FaceTiming were rare. And when we did call, she was always distracted, looking at her computer, playing a game, listening to streamers, and forgetting I was there at times. She even constantly talked about simping over anime characters in our texts and to me it felt incredibly shallow and disrespectful as her partner. She rarely asked about how I was doing, but when she did, it was when she was bored. This was not at all like the friend I knew. I say persistence in our relationship trying to make it work, and even though it was a losing battle, 
A couple more months go by and I'm weeks away from flying to Texas with Seth. Fourth of July weekend was coming up and me and dad celebrated like we always did. Except before it happened, I confessed to mom about what her ex did to me and I confided to, in my closest family members. The last person I needed to tell was my dad. The person I was most afraid of telling. I knew I had to get on his good side to tell him. So I decided to tell him after a 4th of July. At the time, he didn't know I was in a relationship and I kept it that way until not too long after he found out because I wanted him to respect my girlfriend and our relationship since in his mind, if she's not his type, she's not my type. High school shit. Plus, it wasn't his business, so I had that in mind. Fourth of July went as expected. A day of drinking, eating burgers at the Armature Works building, and passing out drunk for nearly an hour in the middle of the day. After a firework shot up in the sky and the night was nearly over, there was a small concert happening nearby and Dad was out dancing. I walked over and got his attention saying that I was nearby, but before I could leave, I was closed in by a crowd of people dancing and I couldn't move out of the way. Before I knew it, there was a woman in the crowd who wanted to dance with me. I didn't think much of it and played along. It started out innocent, but quickly turned sexual. She was grinding her ass on my hips, rubbing her body up and down me, and was clearly more drunk than I was. I was slowly sobering up during the day, but not enough. I tried getting away, but she wouldn't let me go, and I didn't want to cause a scene. Dad was nearby and recorded most of it, but I didn't know where he was until the dancing stopped. She bluntly told me that she wanted to take me home and fuck me, but I wasn't in the mood at all, and I felt disgusted with myself because I was in a relationship and I didn't want my girlfriend to hate me for this and think I was cheating on her. I called dad on the phone furious with him and he thought I was joking when I said that I was going to beat the shit out of him. But I was too tired and mildly drunk to do anything, so we just went home. I drank a few more shots of whiskey before going to bed to numb the pain. Because a few hours later in the morning, I finally told my dad my darkest secret. I told him all the stuff I kept secret from him all these years and why I'm withdrawn from him a lot. Why I spent a lot of time to myself and using escapes and he said that he understands why. And the things I said answer a lot of questions in his head. He asked me what I wanted to do about this and I said that I wanted us to go to the police and open an investigation and he said that he will gladly help me with this. I broke down in tears crying next to him because I wanted to hear those words my whole life. He took the truth well and didn't get angry with me like I thought he would. I had the Texas trip to look forward to, so I asked for us to wait until I came back home. I was having more frequent panic attacks up to this point, so I almost couldn't get a handle on my anxiety since I spoke out. A day before I was supposed to leave for Texas, Joe came to my house again, and my nerves were still on edge, and it just became too much for me, so I ran out and went to my park. Afterwards, I called out on the phone to come get me, and I didn't want to come back home. Recently, I finished up a massive job in Lithia with my boss. I had enough money for the trip, and Dad gave me a couple hundred to get some food and souvenirs. The next morning, he dropped me off at the airport, and a couple hours later, I was well on my way to Texas. I had to wait a quarter of the day for Seth to arrive, so I wandered downtown Houston for about six or seven hours, looking for food and occasionally getting stopped by panhandlers along the way. Then, once I got into the Hilton where we were staying, I met Seth for the first time. It was great seeing him, and we checked into our room for the weekend. We had a real good time at the convention during my time there. A month after my girlfriend and I started dating, I made a Skyrim video for her birthday, and I wanted to give more to her before we met up. So, while I was in Texas, I picked up a couple of things at the convention and made more trinkets for myself. My Texas vlog is on the channel if y'all are interested. After I came back home, my dad and I immediately started the investigation and I gave mom the ultimatum to make Joe stay away from me and threatened to call the cops for harassment. One day while we were driving, my dad told me that he understands me more than he ever did before and that he would like to start again on our father-son relationship. And I fully believed him, except it never happened. The investigation only lasted three months and eventually failed. After I gave my statement and went through a few interviews with the police and my detective, the last thing we needed for conviction was a confession from the man. But he wouldn't talk. At the last couple of attempts, I found out from the detective that my mom intervened with the investigation and it gave him the slip to get away. He denied everything and quietly disappeared from the scene. We failed. At the time, I felt like I lost. I was still at a really low point and shortly after an investigation failed, my dad cut ties with me. 
his birthday came up and I was back home taking part in a donation live stream for a friend. And once the day was almost over, I wished my dad a happy birthday on text and tried to call him. But I didn't get anything back until the next day. He thought I forgot his birthday again and he had enough. I'm always terrible at remembering birthdays and I was prepared for this, but something came up in the morning and I explained that to him, but he wouldn't have it. I even told him on text I wasn't okay and everything was happening too much. Between the jobs, going home, hiding myself in the world, trying to stay away from mom, and doing the best I could during the investigation. I felt like my whole world was crumbling. He heard what I was saying, but didn't really listen. Then he called me and told me not to come to him with my bullshit, and that I needed to learn to become a man, because at that point, he'd rather be happy in his life without me, and he thought that I never loved him after everything he did for me. At this moment, I felt like I officially hit rock bottom. After another unpleasant week with my girlfriend, and when dad stopped talking to me and seeing me, I relapsed in drinking and self-harm. I didn't care what happened to me anymore. My worst fear came to life and I lost. And now I had no shelter to hide myself in the world. I kept buying beer and whiskey after work and one night I almost downed half a bottle of whiskey before throwing up. I wanted to drink until I was dead. Whenever I wasn't putting on a happy face at work, whenever I was off the clock, I just wanted to kill myself. This went on for a long while until I met someone a month after I last saw Dad. One day, during my time in the Horicon VR server, I got a DM from a user named Dreamfinder Star. This all started with us talking about Kingdom Hearts, our favorite game series. She told me that her name was Renee, and after a while, before I knew it, this woman would change my life forever. We were both in a relationship at the time, so we stayed friends. My girlfriend knew that I was talking to her, but I assured her that nothing was going on and that I talked to all my friends in my way, regardless of gender. From July to October, I was working at Vans. I got the job after I came back from Texas, but I wasn't making enough money at Vans, so I quit and started working at Publix in October. The month Renee and I met, Renee invited me to one of her servers and introduced me to some of her friends, and I felt comfortable and accepted being in that community. Renee herself made me feel good about myself and treated me like a real friend. This made me think about the relationship I was in with Raven. We spent less and less time with each other each day while Renee and I were good as friends. After a while, I found out that Renee wasn't in a good relationship either and I helped her come to a hard decision. Afterwards, she helped me see that my relationship was also toxic and that I didn't have to feel obligated to stay since staying was making things worse. The day after Halloween, I took one last trip through Bayshore to my old house. The day after Halloween, I took one last trip through Bayshore to my old house. I used to ride 20 miles over there and back once a year after Dad moved out of my childhood home. Each year, going back to see the house wasn't always easier. I went all the way down the street to the river and looked out over the sun coming up. And that day out there felt brighter and better than any day I lived in my life there. Not before or since. Ever since I met Renee, everything in my life has just been better and I started seeing things in a more positive lens. It also made me seriously think about my life and where I was heading. A couple months after the new year, I broke up with Raven and it was one of the hardest things I had to do. Our relationship never improved and I spent too much time trying to keep it together. 2021 was the worst year of my life and I felt like I was losing everything. And I didn't want to lose Raven because she was all I had before I met Renee. I already lost Dad and I was going to lose her too. But once I got out of the dark place I was in, I knew I had to let her go. I wanted us to stay friends after we separated, but that didn't last either. I haven't spoken to her in almost a year now and I can't go back. But I really do miss the times that we had when we were still friends. I often feel like my biggest strength and weakness is my love for people. I choose to love unconditionally, but at the same time I feel like that's been used against me many times. I stayed away from relationships until I reached my 20s. I felt like I couldn't really trust anyone but myself and I spent most of my time alone. And I was okay with that. When I meet someone like me, in a lot of ways, that's when I let down the walls. Raven was the person I felt like I could rely on and confide my feelings in, and we did that for years. And now it's like it never happened. After a while, me and Renee started dating. 
She stayed by my side for everything to that point and is always patient with me while I'm going through things. In early 2022, me and Renee talked more every day and we got along so well that we didn't feel like strangers to each other. Eventually, we started calling every day and she would show me her world and I would show her mine. I was never really able to get cl this close to anyone, not even Raven. In the summer of 2022, Renee and I were finally able to meet in person. I was still saving up money from Publix and one night on June 13th, I took the midnight train to Georgia. Everything changed once I got off the train in Jessup and my girl ran into my arms. We've been waiting for this day for a long time and we were finally able to meet. Before then, we spent a lot of nights together, watching movies, hanging out, and we have a tradition of watching Happily Ever After, a fireworks show that used to happen in the Disney World a couple years back, but has recently been brought back this year. Renee is a full-blown Disney dork and that is the one thing I truly adore about her. We are different in some ways, but there's parts about us that line up just right. We have just enough in each other's lives to make the relationship interesting. We spent a week together in Jessup at the farm, and I never had a more peaceful week there. We had a Porsche all to ourselves on each of the visits. We adopted a couple of cats at the farm, and we spent moments of the day out there looking over the nature. Kind of like we are an old married couple. It was wonderful. For a while, I was away from my problems in Tampa, and I'd rather be away with the one I love. I keep taking trips to Georgia every month, whenever I had time off work and saved up enough money, I book a train and visit her. I still didn't like being home. My uncle started living with us at the start of 2022, and it wasn't a good time. A month before I took the trip, mom finally broke up with the Joe after a violent fight broke up between my uncle and him. I was there when it happened and I almost called the cops to get him to leave. After that, mom broke up with him after things went too far and she went out of town for vacation. Turns out that Joe was a heroin addict and suffered serious mental problems. Honestly, not too far off from the last guy she knew. On July 4th, a year later, it was my first Independence Day without dad, so I celebrated with Renee instead. My dad and I always had the tradition of watching Will Smith's Independence Day every 4th of July. A couple weeks after that, during our visit, I tried to make contact with him again. The last time I spoke to him, he told me that I owed him money. From the start of the list, I owed him for the insurance fee for when I was in a car accident back in 2021. I was in a wreck in early 2021 trying to get to work with an Uber and needed to get my back checked. I was okay physically, but mentally I wasn't all that good once I knew that I was inches away from getting a serious injury. He also wanted me to pay him back for the investigation because for some reason I owed him for that. That really burned the bridge for me and I didn't want to reach out to him anymore since he was being such a dick and not coming to his senses. I stopped talking to him for months and after this, during one of my trips, I thought it would be a good idea to try to reach out to him again after giving him time to cool off, but it didn't work. And I haven't spoken to him since. After I came back home after another trip, I convinced Renee to finish school and she got started in August and got her GED in December. I couldn't be more proud of her. The more time we visited, we felt closer and closer to each other, and our connection became so strong that it was hard to be away from each other. Back in November, I showed her how I made my videos, and I made the So Much Tribute video in a day, after an idea for it came in my head the night prior. She came down to Tampa to visit me for New Year's, and after that night, I was really thinking about our future together as a couple, and. I wanted to live the rest of my life with her and I wanted her to be part of my world. After she came back home to Georgia, I saved up the rest of the money I could muster and just last February, I got us an apartment and on March 29th, I moved out of Florida and settled into our new home last week. I think I knew from the start that something about this girl was different and that she is a good fit for someone like me. For the past seven years, I spent living in Florida on my own. I wasn't getting anywhere from my life and wherever I moved to, I wanted to be as far away from my troubles and the people and the places that remind me of my past. My life back in Tampa only got worse as time went on and I was going to die if I stayed. During the time when we got hit by the next hurricane, Hurricane Ian back last year, I was able to meet more of our family as we got hit. I survived the hurricane but we were without power for almost four days and miraculously the morning after the storm passed. I was able to book a flight to Atlanta and I made it to Georgia on the one year anniversary where we met. I was on medical leave from work at this time because I accidentally got a second degree burn on my wrist 
during the hurricane, I couldn't work with a scorched wrist. So I went out of Florida for a week. Her family readily accepted me as part of the family and I'm really glad to be a part of it. After the trip was over, I went back home, worked some more, made some more trips to Georgia when I was able to, and the rest is history. After she got done with school in Jessup, she moved back up north and I was heading the same way in the next few months. Now I sit here, talking to you all, and you may be wondering why did I take such a big risk moving out of my home state with a woman who I have only known for two years. Well, sometimes the time you spend with someone isn't always everything. Yes, it's good to take time to know people, but that's all up to each and every one of us. I have learned a lot of things during this time in my life, each with their own lessons and experiences. I have made a lot of connections in my time and none of this would have been possible without doing what I loved. I would have never been able to make this video without doing what I loved. I would have never met the love of my life without doing what I loved. The future is uncertain for each and every one of us, but one thing is absolutely true. Everything happens for a reason. If there's something that you love, something that you can create, develop a passion for, and will make you happy and take you far in life, then follow it. Don't hide it from the world. Make yourself known to the people who follow you and they will stay by your side through thick and thin. The road is not easy though. Nothing worthwhile in life comes easy. You gotta work for it, no matter what the cost. The right road you choose will bring you to your goal. This does not mean I'm quitting YouTube. Far from it. This is actually a turning point for both me, the love of my life, and the channel. Starting a new chapter in this wonderful and fucked up game called life. I, I already did so much in such a short time this year. I feel like I'm truly home. I have a bright future ahead. I have a good family and support system. To show love for myself and Renee, I got us a beautiful home. And we're engaged. The only place left to go is up. And I'd love to have all of you along for the journey. Sorry this video is super long, but this all needs to be said. And I had to make this video in response to such a massive change in my life. And until next time, this is Troll Force with deepest gratitude. Thank you all for walking with me through these amazing and eventful 11 years of the channel. And here's to many more to come. See you all.